What's going on? What's going on? Brutus here with the next up and coming video where our main focus or subject is uh, Town Hall 8, low level transitioning to Town Hall 9. Uh, basically, for those that are learning the three star strategy, I don't have exactly 1515 or 2020 heroes that we see all the time all over YouTube, including this channel. Um, so, yeah, it's basically just supposed to be wide sweeping and a broad uh, skill ability and experience ability. So for this one, we're going to focus on the lower ones. Uh, with that said, let's look at the current war. I want to talk about timing uh, and planning out your attack. So let's look at the current war. Uh, let a, I don't know if it's a mismatch. It's a it's okay match. Um, they got one town all 10. We have one town all 10. They have a 9.5. We have a 9.5. So it's pretty good, except uh, not... Uh, their number one missed to clear a 9.5 here, and they don't have any more 10, so we'll probably exploit that. We haven't really even gone yet, so we'll probably be putting that together. Uh, focus of this war... Um, where did I want to start? I wanted to start with... Uh, tits and Toast. So, here we go. There's a queen here, uh, but Town Hall 8 defenses, no bow, so it's an 8.5. Um, rather than, let's pause it here. You see how this queen is just hanging out? See the ring? Uh, and she's just hanging out right here. Um, right outside, she hops the wall all the time. All you need to do is put down maybe a barbarian or even, maybe even, a, I'd say a giant. Put down one giant. The giant will start walking um, just... Basically, the giant show aggro the giant before she lures the CC. And the moment that um, she does aggro the giant, you want to drop, I'd say, one Valkyrie, a level two. With a level five queen, a one Valkyrie will do this because everything's going to be shooting the giant, including the CC lures, so it's double duty. And then your Valkyrie takes out one Valkyrie, so the cost of 13 troop space. Uh, you can get a CC lure and a, and a dead queen. All right, so and it's important that I'm calling this out in just a moment, uh, but always look for for ex exploit exploitations like this. Whenever you can get an easy, cheap trade, whether that be defensive uh, structures, which we'll look at in a different replay, or the queen, highly valuable target on a map like a, like air defenses or royals, um, and the CC lore, and then of course trap locations, you want to take that. So. We missed an opportunity here to really exploit a shallow queen like this for a cheap trade plus a funnel. Instead, we just do a shattered approach on the bottom here, really far away from the queen. <laughs> we don't have a jump, uh, so I don't know what the intention was for this uh, other than a YOLO. Uh, because entering this side, there is no opportunity whatsoever that we're going to get the queen. Um, the max dragon in the CC makes quick work of a level one golem. So going back to if we were able to pop the dragon out and anchor it as I zoom back out to like maybe this hut on the far corners, we could have easily de uh, dealt with the dragon with a cheap army like kiting it, which we'll see in another replay. Um, we could have easily dealt with it uh, with maybe we're talking 18 troop space. So, so far... Uh, and a poison. So far, uh, and what the, I'm sorry, what that does is it saves the time that the golem brings you when you do your main attacking force. So imagine if this dragon is down, queen is done, now imagine a shattered goho. This probably clears. So those small attention to detail, how to deal with um, crucial parts of the base cheaply and efficiently and effectively make or break, make or break a raid. So Obviously, this was done to begin with. We'll back out of here, and then I'll show you um, the HGHB that decided to do this. You know what? Let's go ahead and get a Ninja Live up in this bad boy. Blaze would appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so he's doing an HGHB. I can tell already. Uh, and uh, um, No, not HGHB. I'm sorry. He's doing a uh, hobo here. He's got a golem already, BK already in the base, um, CC bowlers, and a queen to follow. Really nice. So far, I can tell by the funnel using the camp over here on the far right and the far left as natural funnel breakers. Uh, he got really deep into that core. And then um, you can see the tr the defensive ring. Don't don't uh, hold down on your hog deployment, man. Let him group up a bit. There you go. Let, there you go. So now that he's going to basically be reinforcing the herd and he still has a heal, you should probably drop it right on that air defense. 
and then send the eight hogs right now to cannon number uh, on the floor right here, and then they'll sandwich in between. He's probably going, oh, I thought he was going to go for a swag. He could have, basically. He's swagging out a ton of troop space right here. Yeah, I mean, he uh, technically he could have swagged out a spell or at least 40 troop space. Nice job, Blaze. Woo! Ah, skeet, 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 skeet. <laughs> F your couch. That's right. <laughs> All right, so nice job on this. I believe this was a fresh hit. You got a hut on the um, camp on the bottom. Put your goblin down, buddy. It'll hit that camp. Put your goblin down. <laughs> well, back out. He got that three, no doubt. Um, and I believe that was a fresh hit. So we'll just double check. Nope, it was a cleanup. All right, so going back to how we were on number 11, uh, ironically, it was Blaze that cleaned this mess up. Doing an HGHB. It still leaves the queen out in BFE on the top right here and doesn't um, account for her. The, um, I don't. I still think if we accounted for the queen to begin with and it would have got the lure uh, cheaply, this would have gone a lot smoother, basically meaning less risk involved. So with going into the um, teeth, of a CC trigger like this, especially knowing it's a drag loon, you are forced to use the double poison, but the impact that that does is you don't have any poisons for your hogs, and there's Larry's. So um, maybe if, I still think if we would have popped it out and dedicated at least 12, 15 troop space, I mean, you could even just send one of your many giants that you brought uh, to kind of kite the dragon in the air and then put a queen right behind it and then one poison uh, The dragon's done you still enter from the same side that you're looking for But this time you have um, insurance of uh, poison spell for the Larry's but uh, This Jai he is just do doing work um, He starts to hog from the top. There's no doubt. This is a three uh, Reinforces the herd doesn't uh, thin thin them unnecessarily um, I believe he swags out both spells on this. Or, okay, well, he could have, honestly, he could have swagged out both spells, but he swagged out just one poison. And then uh, there's a ton of time left on the clock, although this is a replay. So he, he actually swagged out some of his um, troop space as well. So nice job, Blaze, on this cleanup here, as well as catching you live on another cleanup. Nice job, buddy. So basically, the takeaway from watching this is. Deal with the, if you have an easy trade swap and lure and you can anchor them to the side, do it cheaply because the rest of your, um, this next phase of your attack, your, your kill squad push as well as your main attacking force all get in, impacted by that decision and then we'll start to illustrate what I mean by that in the next replays here. Um, let's go down to another cleanup. We'll go down to number 10. Uh, where is it at? One of the new uh, guys, XPSD. Uh, welcome, I believe, baby. Uh, yeah, we'll call him XP. Uh, we'll go to number ten. He's on number ten. This is a um, nine point five, but there's no queen. He um, he's doing nine point five wrong, if you ask me. Updating his defenses. He's doing the uh, without dropping the queen. You shouldn't update your defenses uh, if you're going nine point five this early. Um, sorry, eight point five. So he's going to do a volo. Now this is actually not a bad choice. So we're going to switch back over. We're going to switch down into like Town Hall 8 because obviously he's a max Town Hall 8. Um, level 2 uh, Valkyries. Obviously all the air defenses in the core. Deals with the dragon ahead of time. Smart to do. Um, but look at this um, structure. Basically I don't think he had a plan. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And it's no disrespect to XP. But it seemed like he didn't have a plan to anchor the, the dragon. If you're going to pop it out. Have a, have a pre-plan of where you're going to anchor. Instead he kills it on the fly. And I'm thinking to myself. Well then why even pre-pop it out. Just kill it on the fly all the way through. If you just would have anchored up to the top. He would have been fine, and then he still would have been able to send his giant, uh, golem and main attacking force like that. Uh, instead, <laughs> um, his funnel is not quite created. He's uh, He sends it right there. He sends his Valkyries way too soon. The, tr the trash ring is not broken. So the Valk it's really unfortunate. It w would have been a really nice attack because there's no doubt all those Valkyries would have done quick work to everything in here, especially with two heals. I mean, that's a beautiful Volo attack that he had. Great plan, just really 
sloppy execution. Um, he actually had a really nice uh, shattered uh, goho as well earlier. So again, I'm not knocking him. Um, I just think that uh, the small attention to details really make or break the raid. Something as simple as to lure or not to lure. And then not to, um, also having a plan for said CC. Um, by planning in advance, you're going to anchor it down here and I'm going to deal with it this way. Or I'm going to kill it on the fly and this is how I'm going to break uh, the trash ring to make sure that my wizards... Uh, don't get stuck on trash buildings instead of shooting the drag loon, which erase time away from the golem that brings my kill squad and it's not as effective as it could be. So nice job XP, beautiful plan, just gotta break that ring. It funnels are so important. So we're back out of here and I'll show you guys the adjustments that were made on this. This is uh, Mr. T, who's uh, Coffee's Mini. Um, be, I, all right, so looking at the replays that we saw, and the discussion set on this base, would a Volo crush this base? Freaking A, yeah, it would. Um, but why do it? At Town Hall 8, and this is a Town Hall 8, essentially, Ho Hog Swarm will clear every single Town Hall 8 base, period. I'll say it again. Hog Swarm clears every single Town Hall 8 base, period. I don't care to design. It will clear it. It's also the least amount of risk. So why do anything else, right? And I even told XP, we'll show you one of my raids. Um, he's like, man, that was beautiful. And I'm like, yeah, but it gets so boring. He's like, well, then do something else. And I'm like, well, why do anything else? It's the best attack. I hate saying this because I do believe in everything being base specific. As we get this one for one trade, I said, look at this bomb tire on the far left. It's uncovered. Make sure you deal with that so it's nothing you have to worry about throughout the raid. Um, I was like, why do anything that looks sexy or cool if it has the, it has increased risk to fail? That's the takeaway. So um, I told Mr. T, I was like, you can, he loves hog swarm. So I said, go well, you can hog swarm it this way. Um, I believe that we, here's where the giant bombs are because we didn't see any of them. But given the information we did see, it was kind of obvious where they could be. And I said, pre-plan where your heel should be here. Um, and then, you know, kind of hit the base like this and uh, he executed it flawlessly so nice job mr t hitting up four spots on this clean it up and then it also illustrating my point nothing stops a hog swarm at town hall eight nothing 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 <laughs> nothing i don't know if i can say that enough um there's one uh, bomb where i suspected it would be right next to that whiz tower it could have put a heel there but he decided to just let them die um and then he just sends in the rest. I told him that he should probably deploy his hogs in an Asian wall style from a broadside sweeping across. Um, and he he'd have to he definitely would have to use all his heels, is what I said, uh, because I'm we're accustomed to swagging out heels at uh, Town Hall Eight it's hog swarm, and I'll show you. <laughs> but a um, little bit developed defenses, clustered defenses. Just that's all it is with the hog swarm. It's usually a surrounding. Um, approach of hogs that just overwhelm the base um, but you can still do a hog swarm really the hog swarm is that you're bringing a, a shit ton of hogs how you deployed them changes though so a uh, by base but the the army composition for the most part 30 plus hogs doesn't change uh, and that's what I mean about nothing will stop it as we go to times four nothing but cleanup uh, really nice job coffee um, for just one uh, execution of your hog swarm here really like that man um, we'll get out of here. All right, so let's look at... God, where was mine? Here, I'll go to times two because I really want to show you something else. So things that I've been harping about in this video. What I'm doing with this, by the way, I am getting the lure, the CC lure. And I know that by the time that the dragon gets there, this defense will go down. And when that defense goes down, I started a defensive ring for my, for my hogs. You'll see what I'm talking about. I break a defensive ring for my hogs because I'm going to do a surrounding semi-surgical drop. Anyway, this is all pre-planned. I'm going to kite the dragon, you know, keep it in the air with the barbarian one at a time, and then a few archers and wizards to take down the rest. I send down my giant to tank for my kill, uh, my CC killing army, and then I just sprinkle in the hogs and get the fuck out of here. I drop my max hogs first. Because they were going to head straight over. Oh, hold on a sec. They were going to head straight over to that Wiz Tower and BK. I bring a skeleton spell and watch what I do to this BK. <laughs> um, I think I, I, I was. Watch these Larrys. Watch these Larrys. 
I was trying to swag two sw- uh, two spells, and then I was like, uh, to be better safe than sorry, I didn't trip over all the bombs, and I could run over the bomb when I'm cleaning up, so I'll just swag one. Did you see all those Larrys single-handedly take out the BK? Completely null and void him from the rest of the raid. So that's a three and a swag spell. Um, I was actually trying to swag three spells on this one. Going back to um, timing of your attacks. So looking at this base, look how much is, um, again, this could be a Volo base. And look, look at this. Hold on. Um, there's a hole in the, I, sorry, I was trying to make the hole come up. There's a hole in between here. So you can drop down your Valkyries straight in the middle of the base, immediately into a heal after you deal with the CC, of course. And then it's a Volo, right? So, but for me, I wanted to illustrate the timing uh, of how to deal with things collectively. Um, given how the air defenses are not covering these satellite defenses right here, I had a plan to deal with these satellite defenses and then send my main attacking force. So it's three phases. How I did this is I brought right down here. Two loons for this air, uh, archer tower. I drop it on the archer tower because the cannon can't fire back. It is just outside the ring of this archer tower. So by the time my uh, these loons get into threat of that, they've accomplished the job of a one-for-one one trade. Two loons for two defenses. Same thing with over here. Two loons on this one, but then they're going to be done. But that's fine because it's all about I'm doing this for pathing. Seeing the blind spot. In here, I made sure to, to deploy my loons exactly in this order. Um, get this one, then get that one, which would distract this archer tower. Um, actually, it doesn't even matter because both archer towers are not covering the blind spot of the mortar. One wizard would take him out. Four troop space for a one-for-one one tr uh, swap. Uh, and you'll see that. Two loons for up top. Now look, I'm not. Ha I, I didn't expect any of these guys to lure either, so I made sure to do this before I decided to lure the uh, the CC. Two loons coming down here, and when this guy gets distracted by that, and as soon as the cannon goes down, I send a hog. One loon over here because there's nothing getting that guy at all. As soon as the cannon goes down, I send two hogs, and look what work they do. They'll get the lure for me. Oh, I'm sorry, I brought a Barbarian. One Barbarian to get the lure, but these hogs would have got it too. One Barbarian for the lure shows me a giant bomb and three Teslas. This is a fresh hit, obviously. I'm patient before I drop down my Barbarian or my Archer because I'm, I'm letting the Dragon take out this Wizard. Uh, then I can anchor down the CC up top because it was the closest there. I didn't want the Dragon to... T I'm chasing the clock. I want to make sure that I have enough time to deal with it. I kite it. Take care of that structure. Send a few barbarians to keep it in the air. Wizards behind to bring it down. The moment that it drops, swarm the base with hogs. And this is 28, could have been 30. And there's the path. <laughs> I really was trying to swag all three. This guy hit my base and got a 99%. So I wanted to show him how I felt about that and his couch. One heal down here because I was like, you know, why get greedy? You don't get you don't get extra style points or extra stars for swagging out a spell. It's better safe than sorry. I would look silly if um, I would look silly if I um, failed the attack. So I just swag out uh, two spells instead. So like I'm saying, the takeaway on this is look at a base, exploit its weaknesses. It, 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 I love hog swarm at Town Hall Eight, but I wasn't. I could have hog swarmed this base, but why do it? It was for me. It was worth to sub seven hogs for seven loons, and and I got one for one trades on all of them. <laughs> Whenever you can do a one for one trade, do it. The t make sure you have a plan and timing of when you're gonna how to deal with the queen, the CC, if you're gonna anchor it or kill it on the fly. But just scout out a base and have a plan for these things before you decide uh, to mitigate the risk involved with your attack before you proceed. Because the, the best formula for a three-star strategy amongst everything else we know is the less risk involved, the higher percent of success. Once again, this is Brutus reminding you, you got to be better than a double. And I will check you next time.